All right, here we are in the source code for prims implemented in Java. At the top here, I posted some instructions on how to download and run this script in case you wanted to play around with it a little bit. Let's begin by taking a look at the main method right over here. The first thing I do is set up a graph we want to find the minimum spanning tree of. In fact, it's the same graph we had in the slides in the previous video. To create the graph, I call the helper method create empty graph and initialize an adjacency list of size n, and afterwards add various undirected edges of different weights to the graph. Once the graph is set up, I create a minimum spanning tree solver and pass in the graph we just created. The solver is able to tell us whether a minimum spanning tree exists what the cost of the MST is, as well as get all the edges which make up the MST. The output of running the script is illustrated below right here. You can see that this particular minimum spanning tree has a cost of nine and it has these six edges. If you were curious as to how the adjacency list gets initialized and how I add edges to the graph, here's the code that does exactly that. Next up is a class struct which represents a directed edge used in the graph. One important thing to note about this class is that it implements the comparable interface and overrides the compare to method. This simply means that edges are able to be sorted in reference to one another based on the minimum edge cost. This is important for the index priority queue because it needs to know how to compare edge objects with one another to sort them. After the edge class is the minimum spanning tree solver where all the interesting logic happens. In this class, I store a whole bunch of variables to help us out. The first two inputs are n, the number of nodes in the graph, which I get from the constructor, and the graph adjacency list itself. Internally, I store a Boolean solved variable to track whether we have already computed the minimum spanning tree so that we don't need to do it again once we've already solved the problem. The MST exists variable tells you whether a minimum spanning tree was found in the input graph, it's important to note that by default, this value is false. The Boolean visited array is used to keep track of whether node i has been visited or not. And lastly is the variable IPQ, which is short for indexed priority queue, which is a data structure I have defined below. The outputs to this class include the minimum spanning tree cost and the edges which make up the minimum spanning tree if one exists. After the constructor initialization, there are two important methods to know about. There is the getMST method for retrieving the MST edges and getMST cost, which gets the spanning tree cost. Both of these methods work in the same manner. They both call the solve method and then check whether the minimum spanning tree exists and returns a value or null. Therefore, the real method we care about is the solve method. So let's have a look at that. The solve method is only ever executed once because we mark the solved Boolean value is true the first time solve is called and the other times the method returns early. The first thing I do in the solve method is initialize some more variables and allocate some memory for the arrays we will be using. M is the expected number of edges in a minimum spanning tree and edge count is the number of edges we have currently included in the minimum spanning tree so far. Next, I initialize an indexed priority queue of size n. This particular indexed priority queue is implemented using a diary heap, so we need to provide a node degree for the underlying supporting heap structure. I arbitrarily choose the base2 logarithm of the number of nodes, which actually seems to give a pretty good performance, although typically this is an implementation detail that you do not need to worry about. 
The first actual bit of logic we're going to do is call relax edges at node for node zero. This adds the initial set of edges to the priority queue. Let's scroll down and take a closer look at that method, which is right here. The first thing we do is mark the current node as visited so that we don't visit it again in the future. Then I reach into the adjacency list and get all the outgoing edges from the current node. As we enter the loop and start iterating over all the outgoing edges, the first thing I do inside the loop is grab a reference to the destination node index. This is the node the edge is pointing at. Next, skip edges which point to already visited nodes because we know that we don't want to process those. Now here's the bit where we actually relax the edge. First check if the index priority queue contains the key with the value of the destination node. If it doesn't, then add the edge to the index priority queue for the first time. Otherwise, try and improve the cheapest edge at the destination node index with the current edge in the priority queue by calling the decrease function. So that's all for the relax edges at node method. Let's scroll back up to the main implementation right here. So after we add the initial set of edges to the index priority queue, we enter a while loop and loop while the index priority queue is not empty and a minimum stint banning tree has not been formed. Inside the loop, pull out the next best node index edge pair. The destination node can also be found by checking which node the directed edge we just pulled out of the queue is pointing at. After that, add the pulled edge to the minimum spanning tree by placing it inside the MST edges array and sum over the edge costs. Finally, relax all the edges of the new current node. This process continues and we keep pulling the next best edge and slowly start building our minimum spanning tree until eventually the loop breaks. The last thing we need to do is set the MST exists variable to check if we have actually found a minimum spanning tree. If the edge count is equal to M, then we have successfully computed a minimum spanning tree. Otherwise, the graph is disconnected in some way and no spanning tree exists. So that's all for the eager implementation of prims. The only piece of the puzzle that might still be unclear is how the index priority queue implementation works. Here's the index priority queue implementation. However, this data structure merits a video on its own, which is why if you're struggling to understand how the index priority queue works, you should check out my data structures video on the subject, which I will leave in the description below. So that's all I have for you right now. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos. Thank you.